If you use NinjaTrader and you want a fully automated trading strategy, you could use right away on NQ, ES, then you have come to the right play. In today's video, our head trader Austin is going to showcase one of our very powerful Ninja Trader automated strategies, what we like to call the iceberg strat. This is based on our famous iceberg layout slash strategy from one of our users who's pulled out over $20,000 in payouts. And what we've done is we've fully automated it for the Ninja Trader platform. In this video, we're going to show you exactly how to set up the strategy start to finish. And we're going to show you a live example hitting some awesome take profits. If you're new here, my name is Mike Santucci. I'm the founder and CEO of QuantView. We make indicators, automated strategies. We have almost 12,000 members in our Discord community. We are probably the fastest growing vendor of prop-focused trading tools. So be sure to like and subscribe because we post videos just like this every single week. Without further ado, let's just jump right in. Hey everyone, this is Austin with QuantView. This is a strategy guide for the QuantView Ninja Trader Custom Strategy Iceberg ATM. So who is Iceberg and why are we trying to automate his trading? If you go to Discord and you go into the Profit Wins uh, channel and find Iceberg's name in there, he's very thorough with his posts. I would see here from 9-11, he made a 40.75 point trade. So that's 163 ticks. And if you just look at it, look at all the accounts that he's copy trading and each one of these has $755 in it just from this trade. I mean, th this is, this is insane. So what is he doing? He's using his famous uh, trading view layout and he's watching for confluences between a few different indicators. And whenever he does that, he enters his trade and most of the time it goes well. So he's very consistent. It's something that why not try to automate this? So we have, um, so let's show you how to put that onto a chart. I have a blank chart here. It's a 15 Renko chart on the MNQ ticker. I'm using 15 because that's what I use with one of my automation setups. Um, so the first thing that you want to do after you've downloaded it from our last video, you want to go to the strategies button here, and it's going to open up the strategies window. We're going to go to the QuantView Iceberg ATM and we're going to double click on it and it's going to add it to the chart. So now we're going to put in some settings and I'm just going to quickly run through these and we'll add it to the chart. I want to get it activated so I can show you exactly what's going on. So I'm going to put in all of these. I'm going to change the time to nine so we capture our trade today. I'm going to put in a name iceberg ATM test just because that's what we want to use today. Uh, delays fine. We're going to put in all of these and just get it going. Then we'll go over what everything means. So 10, 15, 7, and 21. There we go. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to open up your control center and you want to click the enabled checkbox. So all these other ones are the ones that I run throughout the day on the live stream. The one that we're dealing with today is this one here. So whenever you click the checkbox, it will add the strategy to your chart and it's going to look like this. So let's open that settings tab up and we'll run through what all of these settings mean. So the first one is our money ball settings. I'm going to kind of squish this down so we can see. So the money ball indicator is this indicator right here with all these lines up and down. So what's that, what that is showing is the momentum of which way it's going, either bullish up top or bearish at the bottom. And what we're doing here with these settings is the first setting, the number between bars or between signals, I put at 15. So between all of these markers is at least 15 bars. That's what that means. The period, uh, you can make this go faster or slower based on this number. I have it set at five, which is a good number to use with a 15 Renko. Uh, the higher the Renko, the lower the period pretty much uh, in my experience. Um, all zero, I just have that checked. Um, that's brought over from the trading views um, indicator. 
upper threshold, that's this green line. So it has to get above this threshold before it will give you one of these alerts. The lower threshold is the same thing, but it's this red line that's on the bearish side. So whenever it gets past this red line, it throws you a, a carrot or an indicator. Uh, sensitivity is just how fast it will go up and down. Uh, 0.1 is a good, decent number to put in there. I don't typically change that. If you move it up any, it, it kind of gets a little wonky depending on what your uh, what your time frame is or what your Renko settings are. Uh, trading hour restriction, you can select between unrestricted and restricted. If you hit restricted, you give it a time frame of where you want it to trade. In my case, I typically run between 9.35 and uh, 4 o'clock. I'm probably going to push it back to 1 because I'm getting some pretty interesting results towards the later end of the day that I'm not really comfortable with. So I'm going to start doing that to maybe 1 or 2. So ATM name, this is kind of the heart of this. Um, we put in iceberg ATM tests, and whenever we get done with our settings, we'll go over to our ATM strategy and build it. And that's this is the name that the strategy is going to look for inside of your ATM strategy settings. Default quantity, this is the number of contracts that you would like to open each trade with. Delay between trades, this is a new thing that I put in uh, because I was getting quite a few false entries and they were one right after another and they kept eating the account and I got tired of it. So I put in a delay. Um, if you don't want a delay, just put a zero in. So what this will do is whenever it takes an entry, it will reset this uh, delay counter inside of the script. So in this case, it's 10. And whenever it takes the entry and whenever it exits, it will start counting down for each one of these bars. And it will not take a trade inside of that window. Whenever it gets past that window, it will reset and then it will allow you to open a new trade. So I'm trying with that, we're trying to cut down on all of the uh, false entries. It should help us out a little bit and quit eating accounts. Max daily profit. This will keep track. The script will keep track of your profit or your loss for the day. If you have this checked, it will limit you to whatever you have typed in here. In this case, I have $1,000. This is in currency. So whenever the script makes or loses $1,000, it will quit trading for the day. It will not allow it to trade. Now, want to be careful with this because if you, um, sometimes if you turn your strategy off and then you turn it back on, it sometimes resets it. it it's very sporadic. It's an intermittent error. I don't, really understand why it does that sometimes, but it does. Uh, look back period. So this is one of the big settings in here. So what this is doing is it's looking based on where we are in the chart. So we're all the way over here. This is our current bar. It's looking back whatever setting you have here. So I have 20 in here. So it's looking back 20 bars, count all the way to 20. And it's seen if there is a confluence of all the signals um, within that 20 bars. So in this case, it doesn't. So it's not going to open a trade. Um, depending on if you're getting more entries than you than you want, you can bring the number down. If you're getting if you're not getting any entries, you might want to bring it up a little bit. It's looking back to see if all of the things line up all at once inside of that time frame. Um, I have a, another setting that I put in here was the MACD look back. That's on this bottom indicator here. I was having problems with it um, not looking back far enough for the MACD because you can have downward momentum, but it's it can be spread out and it doesn't follow um, the rest of the indicators as much. So I, I made that a separate entry so I can make that a, a longer look back if I want. So if you're in a, a large downtrend, um, you might want to, you, it might not open an entry if your number is lower. So I, I tend to run with it a little bit higher. I know I have it on the same look back as the regular look back today, but that's just for us to um, look at how this works. Restrict MACD, this is a brand new 
uh, setting that I put in here. If this is checked, it will look at your MACD limit input and it will see if for a, like you want to have an iceberg short entry, it's going to look to see if your crossover, your bearish crossover is higher than whatever number you have in here. So this is a two. So this crossover is higher than two on this scale. So it would be true. Now, if you, if it crossed over down here, say negative one, then it's not going to say that that's, that's true. It's, that's still going to be false. It has to be up higher. So it's looking for the big pivot swings. It's so it's, it's got to be a very fast turn, um, completely opposite of the trend that it's going at the time for that to trigger. That's a new one. It, it also works the same. So the, the, the bullish would have to be below two in this case. So it would be this one here would, that would be true. Uh, that's a new one. I'm trying again, I'm trying to get rid of false entries. That seems to help a little bit. I want to play around with that a little bit more. Um, maybe get some good settings on that. And then the fast, slow signal period. This is how you set up your MACD. That's just a typical MACD entry. And then the SMA, this is also one of the confluences. It either has to be above or below whatever period you put in here. All right, so those are the settings there. Remember once again that we're looking for an iceberg ATM test. So let's set up our ATM strategy. And to do that, you want to come over to the drop down and you want to hit custom. And it's going to allow you to create a new ATM strategy. And I'm going to make this ATM strategy for four orders or four contracts, since that's what we set up um, for a iceberg set up for ATM. We will typically have four targets and we'll put one in each. So, Lately, I've been kind of expanding my stop loss a little bit. I'm going to put in 40 ticks. I like it to have a little bit of room to move around before it stops out. I mean, we're working with M and Q here. It's not like you're running a full contract on NQ. It's not as much of a loss. It's only four contracts. Uh, for profit, I'm going to make this easy. We're going to do multiples of 40. And then our last one, we're going to leave as zero because we want it to be a runner. The first one, we're not going to have a stop strategy because it's either going to um, close out at the stop loss or it's going to close out at the take profit. So that's that one's not going to get a stop strategy. However, the rest of them will. So target two, I want to put a step in here because I want it to move back to the buy entry level whenever it hits uh, the profit for the first target. So 40 ticks. So to do that, again, you click the down arrow and hit custom and you'll get this second box here. And to put that number in, you just want to put it in your auto break even profit trigger. And I'm going to put in 40 there. So now this one has two steps to it. So whenever we get to 40 ticks, it's going to set its stop loss. It's going to leave the 40 and it's going to go back to zero. That way we don't have any risk. All, well, our, only our risk will be the commission for the trade, but that's still, I would call that zero risk. All right. So for target three, this is our third contract. We kind of want to do the same thing, but we're going to give it a trail. So we're going to have our profit trigger for the auto break in or break even at 40 and then for auto trail we're going to do one step since we're running a 40 tick stop loss i'm going to put that in there and again i'm going to put in 40 for a profit trigger and then frequency i'm also going to put in 40 so the frequency is how often it steps up and then it's going to step up by your value here so every 40 ticks, it's going to move your stop loss up 40 ticks. And that's the way this is set up. The same thing goes for target four. I'm going to hit custom, hit the auto trail, and put in 40 for our break even. And then stop loss, we're going to do 
40 and I'm going to put 40 and 40. The middle one doesn't necessarily do much in this case. Um, I'm going to hit OK. And then that is our ATM setup. Now to save this, the name that we want the strategy to look for, we got to hit Save as Template. And I'm going to put in Iceberg ATM Test. And it's going to save it. And it's going to put it here in the box. And it's this is how we have it set up. So it's going to take four contracts. It's going to move its buy entry and sell one at 40 ticks. And then it's going to drop a contract every 40 ticks from there until it has one. And then it's going to be a runner. Now, just to show you, we're going to go back into the strategy settings. And we're going to look here. And our ATM is Iceberg ATM Test. You want to make sure that you have that correct so it doesn't look for something else. I don't think it'll even take entries if you don't have the name set right. Um, all right, so if we go back to Discord and we look at the time that Iceberg made this trade, so it was on 9-11, and then if you look at his chart, because he always posts a chart, this is really helpful for people trying to understand his strategy. You look down at the bottom, and this trade was around 10.14 a.m. on 9-11. So I have brought in our chart into the playback session and we are in 9-11 and this is around 10, 13 uh, and 43 seconds. So I'm going to start playing this and let's see what it does. So it's kind of moving up a little bit here. We're going to get a flip on the money ball, but then it's going to drop back down and we're going to get another flip in an indicator. So here we start coming back down. It's at negative 265. Oh, and then it pops over that threshold. And then we also had a bearish flip here. When we're below the 21 EMA, which we have set. It kind of goes up a little bit into our uh, little area here for it to move around, but then it comes back down. So it's gonna keep coming down and it should hit the first target. So at 40 ticks, it hit that target and it brought the stop losses up. And now it's hit the second target and it's brought it up again and dropped another contract. And then it's dropped again and it's sold the third contract. So now we have one runner and we don't have a price target anymore. So the ATM strategy is taking our 40 tick buffer and our 40 tick frequency and it's moving our stop loss down every 40 ticks. So now we're at 60 points on one contract should move down again up so now we're at 70 75 77 all right there so there there we got our stop out so that trade we started with four mnq contracts we sold one at 40 ticks it's 20 bucks another 40 ticks that's 40 bucks and then another 40 ticks that's 60. so um that's 120 bucks for the three, and then the 80 points is 160 bucks. So all together, it was a $280 trade. Uh, that's how we set up Iceberg ATM. If you guys have questions, please drop me a line in Discord. I'll answer anything that you ask. If you're not a member of QuantView, head over to quantview.io, and you can try out this strategy, this automated strategy, 100% free for seven days. We'll see you there. Bye.